everybody, I hope you're doing well today. I am back to show you some more watercolor techniques. So I just finished teaching this class last night and I thought it would be so much fun to put everything together in a recording, especially if you are a beginner with watercolors. This one covers quite a bit of techniques in a small design. So what we're going to do today is a birch painting that incorporates things like salt, where you can come up with some really cool textures and little details in the background that are quite easy to do, yet they create a really beautiful effect. We're also going to do some negative painting techniques to create the textures of our birch trees. So with that, we'll be using some masking tape to block out the white of our paper first and kind of work in reverse where we're focusing mainly on the background and textures of the background before we work on our images in the foreground. And that might not make very so much sense to you right now. So as an example, this is a work in progress that I did last night in the class to show you how negative shapes are put together in a design. And with watercolor, we're always trying to focus on keeping the white of the paper. Since we don't necessarily have a true white watercolor, there are things like titanium white that will come out a little bit transparent and create pastel colors or gray values, but never like this bright, vibrant white that we're looking for. So in this case, we're going to create some really beautiful textures using our paintbrush and doing things called scumbling where we create these little dots of color. We're also going to use wet on wet techniques where we are going to wet our paper first, add all these colors in and then lift them up if we need to, to create more trees. So again, it's just a really fun and laid back design, especially if you're just starting out. And if you have questions, you're welcome to reach out to me and I'm happy to jump on Zoom if you need to go over things in real time. Okay, so we're gonna start by prepping our materials. And for my beginner students, I usually tell them to work a little bit smaller. And that's because you're learning about the drying time for watercolor. It's very easy to feel impatient when you're waiting for paint to dry, which is normal, I do it too. So what I like to do is just cut down um, some hot press watercolor paper into five by seven inch sheets. You don't have to do that exact size, but something that's manageable for when you're painting is great. And I like to leave about a quarter inch border around the edge. This creates a really beautiful frame around it that also connects to any of your lighter values in your painting. And it's just easier to frame that way if you have a little bit of wiggle room. So when your paper is damp, it's gonna to wanna to move around on you. And so we need to tape down the edges to make sure that we have some control of where these puddles of paint are going to go. And even after your paint has um, dried and your paper has dried, this one is actually a little bit flat, but you will have a little bit of buckling from your paper. And that's just because it's expanding when it's wet and then it's contracting as it dries down. So this little bit of tape is going to keep us from dealing with paper that's wanting to curl in on itself. And I'm just using a regular clipboard. You can use the back of a sketchbook or cardboard, anything that you have on hand that's sturdy. Uh, like a regular kitchen cutting board is great if you have that on hand too. And just regular masking tape. We're not going crazy with it. So with our design, I'm just going to zoom in on this really quick. And I'm gonna show you how to sketch in some of your tree shapes. So you don't have to go by this exact design. What I like to do is kind of create a foreground, middle ground, and background. So we have a little bit of illusion of depth in this painting. And we're not trying to go crazy with details. Uh, we already know that we're looking at a forest based on the colors and shapes of the trees. So our brains are doing a lot of the work for us. So in this case, we're just gonna really play with the colors and layering color, and also with texture, which I think is great um, when you're starting out with watercolor. You don't feel like you have to tighten up so much with your painting, and you can just be really experimental with it. 
So these trees that we have in the background, we won't block out. We're gonna lift those with our paintbrush later on, just like what we have right here. So these are beginning stages of us lifting some of that color. So we don't have to go um, really in depth with our sketch for our design, but we do wanna map out these larger shapes. So this one birch tree that's closest to us is gonna be a little bit larger than the ones a little bit further back. I also try to keep um, the very center of the painting open, just because if you are gonna put a tree or something right there, it will start to cut your painting in half. And it's also like a big target for your design. And actually this little white area right here is kind of turning into that now that I'm looking at that closer. But the more random you can make some of these shapes, the better, because in nature there are very few straight lines. So what I like to do is have some of them kind of coming off the page, going in different directions, and we're just gonna keep it really simple. So I'm just gonna quickly sketch in some shapes based on my original design right here. And you'll notice I'm using more of the side of my pencil, and that's just to keep my hand from tightening up. Because if you draw like this, where you're doing some of these tight lines, you're gonna draw more like that. Which there's nothing wrong on that, but I want you to be able to loosen up a little bit with your design because we're only doing a few shapes. So hold your pencil at an angle like that and you're just using the side of it and you're gonna use most of your arm to do that motion. And it just feels a little odd at first, but once you get the handle of it, um, it's very freeing when you're doing some of these drawings. Okay, I'm gonna have this one going off in this angle. And we don't need to do really dark lines for our piece. We just are mapping in some of these major shapes. And these are the ones that we're going to block out with our masking tape. I'm just making this a little darker so you can see it on screen. I'm not even gonna worry about some of these lines that are a little bit messy because in a second we're just going to be using our masking tape to cover this. So anything that I start to mark out with my X-Acto blade is already gonna change these lines. And then after that, what I'll do is just take some of my masking tape and if I can get my masking tape to work, you can begin blocking out these shapes. Now, if it helps you, if you just wanna keep it really simple in the beginning, you don't have to create curved lines or anything, you can just use the shape of the tree. Sometimes people will even tear their masking tape into strips if you wanna make it look even more rugged. Oh, that one actually turned out perfect. Oh, nice. Happy accident. <laughs> so if you want more of this rough edge to it, that will give that more texture in your painting. So I'll just use the other side of this to show you. Oops, that one. You wanna keep it flat. <laughs> there we go. And if it helps, what you can do is use an X-Acto blade or utility knife. And I'm just gonna change some of the shape of the tree of this for me, just so it looks more natural. But you can just use a very light hand and you can create a natural line with your tape. <laughs> this one doesn't want to come up. It doesn't help that I just clip my nails too. It's good to have long nails sometimes with art. Same here if you need to change the shape. What I like to do is just make sure that the base of the tree, like what you're seeing right here, is a little bit wider than um, the tree as it gets towards the sky. So the base or trunk of the tree should always be a little bit wider to connect to the ground. Even though birch trees tend to be very kind of spindly and narrow, 
So in this case, it's a little bit less wide here than here. So I just want to adjust that a little bit. And again, this part's optional, but I always find it kind of relaxing to do. There's something satisfying about like removing the tape later on too. And that will create some natural tree shapes. So go ahead and map out your designs and I'm gonna do that for mine and I will be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and finished mapping out my trees with my masking tape and X-Acto blade. And here you can see how that little bit of line work where you change that with a blade makes this look a little bit more natural. However, if you're not comfortable using a blade or you just really want more abstract trees, those will also look beautiful. So, you know, do whatever's calling to you with your design. So next what I'm going to do is just use my palette and start mixing my greens for my values. And you can see here, there are quite a few different shades of green, some more like yellow green, some more are blue green, moss green, anywhere in between. So I give you the challenge to try and mix at least three to five colors of green using your palette you have and adding that to your design as you're working on your layers. And it's quite easy to do. So we have some cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, Prussian blue, and burnt umber. Now, if you don't have Prussian blue, that's fine. If you're using like a kit, you most likely have like a phthalo blue or an ultramarine blue. Anything in that blue range is going to create green with your yellow. So it may just be a different shade of green, and that's totally fine. These other two colors, we're going to mix a little bit with our colors, but they can also just work straight out of the tube, which I typically don't like to do, but in the case of this kind of autumn theme design or like late summer, you can start to incorporate more of these organic um, or earthy colors, and that will look really beautiful. So what I like to do is take one of my brushes and you'll also need some clean water and paper towels. So I've got like a big water jug right here. And I'm going to just use my large round brush. However, you can use a filbert or flat for mixing, whatever you have on hand. And you always want to just move your brush and your water to soften the bristles and to also add a little bit of water to your paint. And these are two watercolors, so they come out very thick like acrylic paint, and we need to dilute them so they're easier to manage. And the more water that you add to them, the more translucent they're going to look. So you can have a lot of fun with layering designs. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little scoop of my yellow. It's about three of these wells. Now, if you wanna do more shades of green, you can always add more to that. But this is just a good starting point for when you're learning to mix color. You can always press some of that color off the side of these wells just to, you know, use as much of that that you scooped out. That also keeps these colors pure while you're working. But if you're like me and you get kind of messy when you paint, this is all going to start blending together. And that's fine too. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush really quick. And from here, we're gonna start mixing some greens. So we're gonna take a little bit of our Prussian blue. Again, we're diluting that. And this is a very vibrant blue. So we don't need a lot of it to create a green with our yellow. So I'm gonna take just a little bit to start with. And you can see that already creates a really beautiful green color. And if you need to do a swatch of it, I know it's difficult to see what this looks like in your palette, especially with how much water you're using. So I like to just use a swatch of watercolor paper or scrap. And that gives us a really nice grass green color. That's beautiful. So that will be one of our more vibrant green colors in our design. 
And if you want something more muted, what you can do is always add a tiny bit of burnt sienna to it. And that's just going to make it a little bit more of a neutral green. I'll just show that one next to it. It's not a huge change with the original color. It depends on how much you add. But this burnt sienna color is going to work like the red in our primaries. So I'm not going to go too detailed with color theory today, especially with this beginner design. But anytime you add a little bit of a complementary color on another side of a color wheel, in this case it's more of a muted red, that's going to change the color of the green. So just to show you as an example, I'm going to add a little bit more to it. And as you add more, it's going to neutralize that color. And eventually, if you add equal parts, it's going to turn into pretty much like a brown shade, like a reddish brown. So here you can see the difference between adding a little bit more of that burnt sienna to this original green color here. So this is an easy way to create one shade of green. So you have a bright one that's going to add that color and vibrancy, especially light showing through the forest. And then you have this nice moss green color. So what I'm going to do is leave this one as it is, and then I'm just going to take a little bit more of my Prussian blue and add it to this next well. So you have both of these colors mixed in. Again, it doesn't have to look exactly like the design we have right here. You can see how that went back to this original color. And then on this last one, I want more of a blue-green. So I'm going to add a little bit more Prussian blue to this part. So anytime you have a little bit more blue than yellow, it's going to sway it more towards like a cool color. Take a little bit more yellow on here. You can see that makes ooh, a really nice like forest green color. And that you can see throughout the bottom half of the painting here, where it's a little bit more watered down in spots. Now if you want to see what that looks like, this is quite heavy on here. I can just add a little bit of water to my paintbrush to dilute that down. And you can see how just a little bit of water changes the color. So this is where you can have so much fun mixing colors. You can make color charts to help you understand how these colors interact with each other. But I work with color all the time and I feel like I'm constantly learning something. So if you feel a little bit intimidated by it, don't worry. I feel like most artists are unless they just, I don't know, are like a prodigy when it comes to color theory. But the more you experiment and practice, the more um, you're going to understand how these colors work. And it's a lot less intimidating. Again, we're not going that detailed with it today. I just want you to get a good understanding of what we're doing. So I'm just cleaning off my brush again. And what you can do also is if you want to make more of like a yellow ochre color, you can mix a little bit of your yellow. This has a little bit of green with it. That's okay. A little bit of your yellow. And that's actually really pretty. I might leave it just like that. <laughs> see how that looks. It's just more of a muted yellow that you can see quite often in the original design up here where I want brighter colors towards the sky. So that's how you get that. It's mostly yellow with a tiny bit of blue. And then I'll do one more where it's yellow with a little bit of our burnt sienna. This is going to get us like a golden yellow color. This is where you get those autumn colors that are really gorgeous. Add a little bit of water to that. And that's just a little bit more golden than this one. This has quite a bit of green added to it. So have fun with this part. You can use every part of your well or get a second palette to experiment with it. But again, you can see how quickly we can create all of these different shades of green. So I'm going to give you some time to do that. And once you're ready, we will get started. OK, so now we are ready to paint. Um, you may want to go ahead and get clean water before you start this process, just because you're 
Um, water is probably starting to look pretty green and mucky and any of that pigment from your water will transfer to your design. So just take a minute to do that. And then what we're going to do is just use one of our larger brushes with our clean water and we're gonna add that to our white spaces in our design. Don't worry if it's covering over this tape, it's gonna repel that. And if any gets underneath the tape for some reason, it'll just be part of the texture. So I'm gonna dip my brush in my water and we're just going to add some clean water to our design. And this is known as the wet in wet technique where we're pre-wetting our paper and it's gonna create some really beautiful blooms and movement on our paper with our colors. So with watercolor, anywhere where water is, it's gonna move towards it. But if you don't put any water down, it just kind of sits on the surface. So you can see here any spots where the water has been added because it has a nice glossy appearance to it. And I like to just go over this a few times to make sure that there's no puddles of paint that may be a little too heavy. So just a nice little glaze of water. Good. So from there you can switch to whichever brush that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and set the filbert down because most likely you don't have that one, but a large round brush will work. Same thing as before, we're always going to dip our brush in our water before we start painting. And from here, you can use any colors that you want that are mixed. So I'm gonna start with this lighter green color towards the top, and I'm just gonna tap that on in a few areas. And you can see it's wanting to move around on our paper anywhere where the water is sitting. And I'm not thinking too hard about it, I'm just letting it do its thing. You can add another more of that golden color if you want. You can add a little bit of green. You can push that color around too if you wanna fill more spaces. You can even go directly in with your blue if you want some really bold blue colors. Because most likely it's going to start mixing on the paper so you get some other green colors mixed in. And I just like to keep some of the darker colors towards the bottom just so it gives this natural weight to our trees. And then you can just move the brush around a little bit if you'd like. If you wanna create a little bit more of a high contrast with your trees, you can always add a little bit more of that darker green around one side of your trees. because so you have to imagine when we lift that tape, it's gonna look like that with this large shape here. So we don't want the background color to be too close to the color of our white, else there's not going to be that contrast that makes it to look a little bit more uh, heavy. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> You can add in a little bit of your burnt sienna color if you want a little bit of that reddish brown, which I always think is really pretty. And you can see sometimes when you add that new color, it's going to repel the other color where you get this little pop of brown or reddish brown in spots. You can even do that with your yellow. And again, just have fun with this process. I'll do that with a little bit of my burnt umber color too. Just towards the bottom. Again, that's where most of our dark colors are going to be in our painting. And you can see here how some of this is drying to create some really beautiful textures. I know there's a little bit of a shine there. Hopefully you can see that. Now I have my paper tilted too, so that's also moving that color around. So I'm just going to pull some of those puddles back up. Add a little bit more of this burnt sienna just in a few spots because I want to make it a little bit different from my original. And 
And then while this is drying, this is where you can add a little bit of salt to your design. Now a little bit goes a long way, like I said before. So just a few little bits of salt are going to repel that and create some gorgeous textures. So I know I'm like moving my fingers around, but I'm barely adding <laughs> any little bits of salt. So if you add too much, it actually is kind of cool. It will start to embed into your paper and it's almost like natural glitter where it's like crystallizing on your paper. So if you wanna see how that looks in a test, you're welcome to do that. And we're gonna try not to disturb any of that, especially towards the bottom half of our painting. But while that's drying, this is where we can start pulling up a little bit of our background trees. So I have one going off right here, and then two right here, and then one to the side. Wherever you wanna pull a tree up, or you can just leave it as it is if you wanna do this for your first piece. So I'm using a clean brush. Oops, that one's not clean yet. <laughs> It will be clean, a clean brush with a little bit of water on it. And what I'm gonna do is press down my large paintbrush and try and pull up some of that color. And you can see how that's just lifting that to add a lighter value. It won't be the exact same color as the bright white of our paper, but it will give us that shape that we're looking for. So I'm gonna do that right here with these two. Again, just pressing down a little bit. If you need to, add just a little bit more water to your brush to help pull that up. And we're doing this gently because you can put a little bit too much pressure and put a hole in your paper. So we're definitely not trying to do that because at that point, it's like no going back. You just have to start with a new piece of paper. But unless you're really, really rough on your paper right now, you should be fine. I'm just going to do one right here, too. If you can see that, okay. Another fun thing you can do while some of this is drying is you can use one of your smaller brushes. And we can do what's known as a back run or a back wash. So on this, my paper still wants to hover in some of those places. So I can just tilt this around. And that's just because I have an angle at my, on my table. But if you take one of your small brushes, you can, again, dip it in some water. And your paper is reaching a point at this time where it can't absorb any more water. So anytime you add more water, it's going to push your pigments around and repel those colors. So if you just do like a light hand with this, you can create some really gorgeous back runs. So I'm just trying to work around some of the salt here too, to try not to disturb too much of it. But this gives us some nice like little spindly lines in the backgrounds. And it may take a minute or two for it to pop up, but as soon as it does, if you can see right here, it's starting to do it. That's a back run. So once you like how that looks, you can see some of that salt is starting to create this really gorgeous effect to it. Right around here where it's repelling that. So we're gonna let that sit and dry. And with the salt, you know, a hair dryer doesn't really work with it. But if you just give it about 10 or so minutes, let it dry down a little bit, come back and then you'll be able to use the hair dryer. We just want to make sure that it's moving around the way that it wants to on our paper. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit and I'll be right back once that dries. Okay, so now my painting is completely dry and you'll notice with yours that the colors are a little bit lighter than when you initially put them down. So it's a great starting point for our next layers. You'll also see where this uh, blooming that happens from our salt creates some really gorgeous effects. 
Um, they almost look like snowflakes. So a lot of times I'll use table salt if I'm doing winter scenes or something that's cooler toned. And that just brings a little bit of that texture um, to mind when you think about like winter. But in this case, it almost looks like twinkling lights and spots and I just absolutely love it. So there's a lot of little surprises that happen with watercolor and that's um, the spontaneity of it really motivates me to always want to paint more with it because you just never know what's going to happen. Even if you have a lot of control over your design, these little effects just always surprise me. So for this next step, what we need to do is work on our values a little bit and also adding just a little bit more texture around the top. So in comparison, you'll see like the bottom half of our painting and even parts of our top half are a little bit darker. And that's to firmly plant in these tree shapes. So anytime we look at art, um, if we're doing something kind of in the realm of realism, or if you wanna have the sense of weight, sometimes by changing these values to be a little bit darker helps us understand what we're looking at. Now you can pick and choose how you want yours to look. Sometimes if you like the, the colors and everything, you can just add a little bit of this here or there. So it's completely up to you. I'm just sticking a little bit closer to the original design because you know that's what you came here for. So on this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch back and forth between our large and smaller rounds. So this is a number 12 and then this is a number six. You can even, if you wanna do some delicate work with the number zero or like a two round. And we're just gonna mostly add in this texture towards the bottom half and towards just a little bit of the top with our shapes. So this kind of texture right here is known as scumbling, where you're loading up your brush with some paint and then you're just tapping on a few little areas around there with your colors. So we're mostly gonna work in between the shapes of the trees, and then also we're gonna make a little bit more darker shapes and lines for the bottom half here. But that's how you get these really fun effects. Now, obviously with the larger brush, it's gonna create bigger shapes than the smaller brush. So you may veer towards one that you're more comfortable using. If that's the case, you know, just go with it. So to stick towards the original design, what I'm gonna do is start with some of these brighter areas. Now I love the yellows and golden colors coming from here, so I don't wanna completely cover those up. We worked hard on that. <laughs> But we do want to add just maybe a little bit more texture to push some of these trees towards the back. Again, it's always about like creating depth with a design like this. So I'm going to take my big brush and dip it in some water, just like before. And I'm going to go into these more golden yellow and uh, autumn colors here. So this is where we added a little bit of yellow with our burnt sienna, if you need to remix that. And then this one is uh, those two colors with a little bit of blue added to get like a yellow green. And again, I'm going to just tap this on just in a few spots, not thinking too hard about this, but it helps to break up some of these big shapes here that might not have a lot going on. So I can do this other color too, just to show you. Just tapping around it and helping to create some of that texture. I'm going to try to avoid some of these areas that already have texture added to it, especially with the salt, because I definitely don't wanna cover those up. I love those. But it also, as you layer it, you'll notice that you're creating even more greens. So right here, when I tap that onto this lighter green color, this layers on it with a little bit of transparency to create a new green. And this is known as glazing. I know I'm covering a lot of techniques right here, but just give you an understanding of what you're doing. So because these are all transparent colors, even over these lighter areas right here, you can see it changes that color. That is a perfect example of glazing. And that's why it's easier sometimes with watercolor to work from light to dark. That way you have a little bit more control over what you're developing in your design. And um, it's just a really good way to practice value. And when I say value, that's me just saying from light to dark. Do a little bit more with these designs. I don't mind covering up a little bit of these tree shapes that we had. 
Again, those aren't the focal point of our design. These large trees in the front are. So don't be afraid to layer. Oh, the kitty cat's crying. I might have to let my cat in here. He's terrible with recordings though. He will destroy this whole area. So again, I'm adding a little bit towards the bottom. You can see that glazing is also occurring here. And we're gonna do the same thing with our darker colors too. So again, make sure your brush stays wet. Mine's starting to dry out a little bit here. And you'll always notice if that's happening because the bristles of your brush are gonna start like moving around and creating new textures. And that's fine if you like how that looks, but if you don't, just add a little bit more water to your brush and go over those spots. Hey, buddy. Okay, so I'm gonna continue doing this with hopefully the cat not destroying us. So if you want to, you can dip into some of your burnt sienna if you wanna add some of those colors around the bottom. Hey, buddy. Hey. <laughs> so you can just tap that into a few areas. No. <laughs> Come on. Don't do it. He keeps wanting to walk on the painting. The perks of having a pet. So this is where, you, again, you can build some of this texture. If you wanna have some of this red towards the top, you can. Anywhere where you wanna slowly add those colors. Hi. <laughs> okay, kitty cat. Okay. <laughs> Again, you can dip into some of your other colors if you'd like to add some of these darker greens and browns towards the bottom half of your painting. You can even go in with some of your blue-green if you want to brighten that up. And if there's a color that you're not in love with, like right here, I'm not really crazy about that, I can just add a little bit more water on my brush and move that to a different spot of my painting. And that will just make it a little bit more diluted. Or you can even scoop up that color and wipe it off on your paper towel if you want to completely remove it. So I'm also gonna go in with some of my burnt umber color right here. Add that again towards the bottom. And this is where you can again, just start layering a little bit. Try to avoid some of those areas that you wanna keep. My neighbors must be having fun outside if you can hear that. They're cute. And again, you can pick and choose how much of this you want to add. So I'm going to go in with just a little bit more of a darker color just towards the bottom half here. So you can mix some of that blue green color or a little bit of yellow anywhere where you want to add some of that darker value. So if I mix some of my green with a little bit more burnt umber, that's going to create a nice greenish brown darker area just in a few spots again we're just trying to make the values towards the bottom a little bit more of a darker color and again you don't have to think too hard about oh, <laughs> kitty cat um where you're putting those colors buddy please So I also like to add some of that towards the base of the trees, that same kind of greenish brown. <laughs> he 
you are something today. And again, if it feels a little bit, <laughs> seriously, kitty cat, um, if it feels a little bit too heavy, you can always just add a little bit of water on your brush and you can pull some of that color up. You can layer it in a few spots. Add some of that towards the tree around here. And again, this is just more glazing that we're doing. Now there's cat hair in there, but that's okay. So towards the upper half, you can do that as well. If you want to add even more colors, this is where I like to add more of those lighter greens, just different textures of greens. And you can choose when to, when your stopping point is for this part. So it's nice and easy. Tapping more of that color on anywhere we want to put it. You can even go in with some of your solid yellow, just the original color that we had in our mix. If you want to make some really bold marks, I like to do that just in a few spots. pretty good so I'll stop right there I'm gonna let this dry down and if you want to speed up that process you can use a hair dryer for this part and the hair dryer is also going to reactivate the glue on this tape here so once everything's completely dry you can start removing just the tape where these tree shapes are okay okay so now that we've removed the tape you can go ahead and use an eraser to get rid of any graphite that's left from your initial drawing uh, that's just because um, we are working with transparent paint so it will show the graphite afterwards and with this we're just going to mix just two more colors so these are very easy to mix we're going to mix our blue our prussian blue with a little bit of our burnt umber you can see those two same thing as before, we're just going to dip our brush in our water. And with this one, uh, these two colors tend to neutralize each other as well. So this is where you can get a nice blue-black. Depending on how much of the color you mix together. So from my initial swatch, you can see that color right there. That'll be perfect when we're adding some of the shape of our trees. Now, um, with that, that's kind of more on the green scale. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of this brown to it. And that's going to create a nice neutral. Yeah, that's pretty good now. So you can see the difference between the two right here. One is just a little bit deeper than the other. And then the other color I'm going to mix is, I'm, I can just take a little bit of this original scoop right here towards the middle of my palette. And on this one, I'm gonna add a little bit of that burnt sienna color. Add a little bit more water to it. This will give us also another neutral brown. Now, just like before, if we're adding more water to that mixture, it's gonna change the transparency of it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more water on my brush just to show you what that looks like. So we're gonna use these colors for our tree bark. And just like before, I want you to experiment with the transparency of these. As I said, you can have some really deep marks with this color and this original color here. But we're going to just start with a thin layer. So we're going to do the wet and wet technique like we did for our background, just within these negative shapes right here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. And this is again where you can use some clean water. 
and I'm going to just add that water right along the tree. Now you don't have to worry about covering every single part of the tree shape because you can always move that color around. And even on my original one here, I like to keep some of the original white popping through just in a few spots to help us connect with the borders of our design. So you can pick and choose where those little pops of white color show up on that. So for this, I'm going to mix between using my three round brushes here. Now this one's great for just adding the water, but I'm going to just have a little bit more control with this by switching to my smaller round. So this is the number six. I'm wetting the brush. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of that color that we just mixed. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. And I'm just gonna start moving that around the shape. And you can see how it creates that tree bark with that wet and wet technique. So I also like to curve my brush a little bit if I wanna make the tree look a little bit more round. And I don't wanna completely cover the white of my paper because we want some of that lighter value to show through. But I can add a little bit more of my darker brown that we just mixed and just put that in a few spots to create that texture. And you can do as many layers as this, uh, of this as you'd like. We just don't want to, again, cover up all of the white. You can even go in just with your burnt umber color if you want more of that lighter color on there. And this is where I just pick and choose where I want some of that shape. You can use just the tip of your brush to add in some more of those lighter lines if you'd like. And it's just a really easy way to create those textures. Now, if anything looks a little too heavy, you can always use a little bit of water on your brush and you can scoop up some of that color if you don't like where that's looking or how that's looking. But typically I just try and stick to one side of the tree that's going to be a little bit darker than the other side and that's gonna help you create some of those shadows within the tree. Especially towards the bottom half of my design. But that's a great starting point for this. So I want you to do this on each of these shapes and then we'll go back in with a little bit more detail. So I'm just gonna do this one adding some fresh water. You can even do like two at a time if there's the skinnier ones right here. Again, I'll switch to my smaller round brush. And if you want even more details, you can switch to your smallest brush here. And then I'm going back in with those same two colors, just adding a little bit of color and spots. Again, it's gonna do most of the work for us. While this is still wet, I can just drop some of that color back in this one. Again, try and keep one side a little bit darker than the other if you wanna have even more illusion of like shadows and textures. And it's drying kind of fast, so I'm gonna reactivate this one really quick. See that okay? You can just have fun with it.
can always add a little bit more texture in spots while it's still damp. You can even go in with some of your burnt sienna if you want a lighter brown. And again, try and keep those lines a little bit curved just to give the illusion of volume. And then you can add as many textures as you'd like. Now there's going to be a few spots where we definitely need to, oh gosh, that light is harsh. We're going to definitely need to add a little bit more going on with some of these in the front because we imagine as we get closer to these birch trees, the largest ones here, they're going to have a lot more um, detail to them than ones in the background here. Which, by the way, we can add a little bit to them as well. They already have a little bit of shadow on them, so I'm just adding just a little bit of texture in a few spots. Do that on this one, too. And you can see some of that original white color is still popping through, which is going to look beautiful once we add in our details. So I'm going to go in with our darkest color again, just in a few spots, especially towards the bottom here. And it's going to start drying on you a little bit more, so it's not going to move around nearly as much as it was on our initial color. And this is where you can just use the tip of the brush to add more of this texture. You can even use the side of your brush to like kind of press along to create even more of that branch or um, bark texture from the birch trees. I'm going to add a little bit more of that darker color just on the side here. So I'm trying to hold it at this angle so you can see a little bit better. The gloss from the water is making it harder to see. And then you can slowly build that up. You can always go back in with your original blue-green color in a few spots if you want to add some of that just along the base of a few parts of the tree. Just to incorporate some of that color in with the background. I'm going to do that just in a few spots towards the bottom. Again, you can always push that color around if you don't like exactly how it looks in some spots. But again, towards the base, we're just going to keep making that a little bit darker. And then I'm also incorporating that just around parts of the tree. So we're just fine tuning any of these last little bits of our design. liking how that looks. I think I just need a little bit more towards the top in a few areas. The ones in the background we can add a little bit more texture to just so you can kind of see what they are. This one's kind of lost in the background but that's fine. And then I want a little bit more of a base of this tree right here just to show that it is a tree so I'm just tapping on some of that darker color. looks really good. I'm happy with that. Just going to do a little bit more fine tuning with some burnt sienna and our burnt umber just to incorporate some more of these colors into the design. I'm being very uh, delicate with this, just using it sparingly. I don't really love this shape right here, so I'm going to pull that up with some water and a clean brush. But whatever is left over in that spot gives that little bit of brown. I'm 
You can even do some dry brushing again where you're letting some of your paint dry a little bit on your brush before you drag it across your tree. And we are seeing a little bit of the texture from our tape competing with some of our shapes here. So sometimes helps just to grab another piece of your, uh, or like a scrap of your paper. And you can see a lot of this yellow right here is blending in. So if you wanna hold just a white sheet of paper over part of it, it's gonna help you see more of your values. And then when we lift this tape, when everything is done, it's like magic. <laughs> everything comes to life. Because again, this yellow right here is really overpowering some of the colors in the piece because it's just so close in uh, color. So one last thing that I'm gonna do just to make it look a little bit more like the original is you can go back in with a little bit more scumbling in areas around your trees. This is where you can have things overlap and then one other thing is if you want to create some little spindly branches of your birch trees, you can use that original dark color. If you need to mix a little bit more of it, you can mix some of your burnt umber with a little bit of your blue. And we're using our small round brush here. This is, again, the number six. We're going to really load this brush up with paint. And birch trees are interesting because they have this base to them, but then they have just a few little branches stemming off. So I'm loading up my brush. And sometimes what happens with your brush is that you have more water on it than you might want to use. So you can just tap off the excess water on your brush. You can see all that leftover water that would have gotten on our painting. And you can just use the very, very tip of your brush to create some really spindly little lines like that. Kind of like flicking eyeliner or something similar. Just here or there, I try to use this sparingly just because it is such a dark value. You can use some of that same color to tap in anywhere towards the very bottom if you still feel like you need to push this color back, which I feel like I need to do with some of mine right here. Just on the very bottom, you can see how that makes a pretty big difference with the way that the trees come forward. too. Yeah, I like how that looks. So I'm cleaning my brush a little bit more, scumbling on some just solid yellow at this point, that cadmium yellow straight out of the tube. And this is where you can overlap a few parts of your painting if you'd like to make it look like there's some leaves popping in through the trees. Kind of ties everything together at that point and it just warms it up a little bit too sometimes at this point you start to lose a little bit of those bold yellows that we originally had again we don't want to completely overwork it we just want to add some of that in spots again you can add some of that burnt sienna too if you want to include that in a few areas if you want it to look more like an autumn theme Again, just fine tuning. I see where the cat like dragged his tail across the spot, so I'm gonna cover that up a little bit. Silly cat. And if you need to tone down some of those colors, like if it feels like it's sitting too much on the surface, you can just clean your brush and with a little bit of water, you can just blend that in with a little bit of the background, just so it's not so overpowering. But that's pretty much it. So after your painting completely dries, that's when you can do the big reveal with the tape. And I promise you, as soon as you see the white from your trees showing through with the white border here, 
everything just comes alive. So I hope you like the class. I'd love to see how your paintings turn out if you want to share them with me. If not, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you so much.